Oh, but we are talking Lions free agency. Are there even any moves left for Brad Holmes to make? Uh, Dark Cash says 750 k for Cam Newton for one year. You know what? If, if it was a league minimum situation, fine. Other than that, I don't want to hear about it. And, I, and, and that's it. Like, that's it. That's all. Like, these people, again, I go back to it, man. These people with the, with the backup quarterback scenario, I'll never understand it. And by the way, as we look at what's out there free agency-wise, speaking of backup quarterbacks, at the top of the list, I guess you could say, Carson Wentz out there? Nope. Matt Ryan out there? Nope. Uh, Kenny Galladay is a name. I, I hear people talking about wait, reclamation wait. projects for Kenny Galladay. Yeah. Uh, some other names out there, notable names. Uh, Taylor Lewan is out there. Leonard Floyd, the uh, linebacker that the, that the Los Angeles Rams released. He's out there. He figures to be a higher dollar guy, although the market, DMAC, has seemed to uh, run dry a little bit. Well, I think you just got to reverse engineer. Is that w- where are they going to go? I, I said, and I've been saying it for weeks, free agency will sort of get, uh, dictate of uh, maybe playing, let you know what Brad Holmes and the Lions plan is going into the draft. But what, where are, do they need? And then you look at the list, you just named. There's no backup quarterback out there worth any of the little money or that would take league minimum money, I would think. Right, with the names that you've said, some of these other guys are looking for long-term deals. Yeah, there's still guys out there, but I look at it, and, and here's the one thing, and I'll reiterate it along, and I just read Graham uh, Glasgow, who signed a one-year deal, and you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he was quoted as saying, hey, I want to get back in the room with my boys and my buddies you know, and, and go to work and do it, which is the mentality, whether it's a new guy, an old guy, an old guy being a new guy, a new guy being an old guy, whatever like this, coming to this organization, everybody wants to be here and on the same page. So reverse engineering it, I think most of the next, next moves or anything impactful comes in the draft. That's when Brad Holmes cooks. So it uh, could be something small, but it's gonna, it fits in. I ask you this every time, you know, right after they sign a guy or they go negotiation how does it fit with the money is the money good and every time you tell me no it it's good these are good deals and stuff like this we still haven't figured out the rest of the financials because you still have decisions to make on buy tie um but but it's i mean this we mentioned it yesterday did the lions win the off did they win the free agency and whether we did or not it's the best free agency we've had in this city by our number one GM. Which is weird, because I was told he's not good at free agency. No, no, you were told that he hadn't shown you yet. And yeah. then you explained to the people huh. why he hadn't, because he didn't, because he was handcuffed, because he was still paying off the interest from the one credit card that he inherited when he came on the job, had to get the interest down, and now he's like, hey, I got my own credit cards under my own uh, credit check and stuff like this. Now I'm going to go out there and spend my money. Now he's spending his money, and that's now he's cooking. So the reason why he hadn't, because he hadn't stepped to the table, because he took care of his responsibilities before adding new ones, right? Instead of letting the bad, it's the same thing as what Steve Eisman did, getting rid of those bad contracts so you can move forward, right? And we are seeing that, too. Because I, I, I thought, remember how we, we, sometimes we change each other's mind. Right. right? And, and I thought the same thing. And I said to you, I said, but Brad Holmes really hasn't done anything in free agency. And you said, but he hasn't had the ability. Right. Well, he did. It was Trey Flowers and Jamie Collins. That was his free agents that weren't here. Those, those were his $19 million of free agency money went to. But that was the credit to. card bill that he married into <laughs> that he had to pay off. That was the student loans that were the, due. Whatever it was, whatever negotiation with your sweetie pie that you bailed her out as you move into this new relationship, this marriage, this family. No, and, and you know what I do like about this too? And we've seen it with Steve Eiserman, and obviously we saw it with Brad Holmes. And I think to a degree, too, we've seen it with Troy Weaver. Remember, Weaver showed up on the scene. They, play, they paid Blake Griffin $30 million to not play, to not be here, because they, they had to, to get out of that contract. You're seeing a light shined on this. And this is why my disdain for the Tigers and where they're at right now. Because as I peruse things, I look and I see Javi Baez still has, what, one, two, three, four, five years at $25 million per year left. You, you like you like your hey to quote a good friend of mine. Do you like your spot? But he had four, do you like your spot he on had that? Four RBIs and hit over three hundred in the World Classic. Did he? Oh, cool. 
But you get what I'm driving at here, though? Ed, like Eduardo. Spot. No. Uh, no, you don't like your spot. Eduardo Rodriguez, by the way. Is he playing? He's got 18, 16, and 15 million Wait, per on. year left. Is he even playing? Is he back? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you see the difference, though? There's 43 though? million in two guys. So one of these things is not like the others, like the construct of the team. And in today's day and age, you have to have financial flexibility, DMAC. You have to. It's a non-negotiable. In every sport, right? It's a in, non-negotiable. In every sport. That's why there's so many different layers to it. I mean, baseball, I guess, the least, because as I always talk about, as an owner, you can wake up one day and decide, hey, we're going to be good. Today, this morning, we're going to start doing the steps necessary to now, be good. Now, they got to do the same thing, though, like with the escrow money. Like you were talking about with the NFL, if you sign a $300 million, you got to put it in escrow. The, the baseball yeah. guy's got to do the same thing, right? I, I don't know that for sure, but I would imagine so. Okay. But it just goes to show you how much. In the NFL, that is the case. Like when you see these huge signing bonuses, the second you sign the contract, you, know, you see Matt Stafford, four years, $160 million, $100 million guaranteed. The owner of the Rams writes a $100 million check to the escrow company, and then the escrow company disperses it to Matt Stafford ag- according to the terms of the, of the agreement. So you see what I'm saying? Like, that comes into play as well. It does. It's just it's a financial world. And WoodwardSports.com chat thread Todd saying no cam talk in here. I promise you guys. I promised you guys that, and I mean it. There's just so many people talking about it that I felt I had to address it. But then quickly we pivot and we move on. So, so don't worry about it. But, you know, that's, that's where it sits as far as can, the teams and everything like something? that. Yes. Algonac, Michigan, audit 27. Thank you for wasting $5 and saying trading golf for Lamar and then draft Max Duggan round seven as a backup quarterback. The other thing I'll say to that is that we had this conversation yesterday. If Brad Holmes did draft Max Duggan, right, um, at seventh round, I would look at it that he saw whoever he drafts, he sees something in. It's not a throwaway pick, right? Right. No matter who it was. But the golf for Lamar, come on. Thanks for the five bucks. We'll keep tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Harrington says, we'll Alan. That's where Spencer's uh, whatever parking ticket fund we got to now, or, or, or his Al Capone fund. Uh, yeah. Um, Lorena Rio says, Neil, what happened to the Tigers Castro brothers? I thought they were good. Remember those days, Sam Flannel? <laughs> uh, so many Castros. The bad Alcantara. <laughs> yep. We got every Alcantara except the good except one. Except the Cy Young winner. Yeah. <laughs> so unfortunate. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wild to me.